let me tell you about some chicks that I know I got a Latina girl that said she wanted Prano I got a girl in Toronto, man, I call her Raptor She tryna chase the dollar, yeah, that's all she after She said she fed up with the modern rappers There's no energy, that's sounded thin to me, yeah So I said I got that remedy, I got that old shit You can depend on me, <laughs> cause I'm versatile Shake up the floor, I reverse the tile You can bet your whole purse every Hey, what's up everyone? This is Eli from CheckIt.com here with a Photoshop tutorial on Wobbuffet Wobby, whatever it is, Wednesday, probably being released tomorrow. Anyway, if you guys can't tell, I'm back to being sick again. Isn't that great? My nose is clogged again, but anyway, enough about me. What you guys want to know is how to make furry text. A couple of you guys requested this over the past couple weeks, so the cool thing about this effect is that I've actually done it in the past, and uh, there's a lot of different ways that you guys can can go about doing this effect but I'm just gonna show you guys my favorite way of doing it I'll be providing a bunch of textures that you guys can use for free at checkit.com slash downloads as well as the project file for this however I can't just give them in the file that I'm gonna be giving away at checkit.com because uh, they're licensed I will be putting the link to where you guys can download them and a ton more for free it's a place called graphicburger.com it's just slash backgrounds but I'll put a link in the description for all you lazy people anyway I'm not getting paid to talk about these people but they have awesome free Photoshop backgrounds and such even icons and everything like that all for free and they are very high quality and amazing so yeah, I'll give you guys that link, and I guess now we can get to the tutorial, but before I do, please give the video a like, it helps out so much, and also don't forget to leave a comment, because I leave all my favorite comments at the end of the video. Don't forget to stick around, because your comment from my last tutorial might have made it to my favorite comments on this tutorial. So, anyway, let's get to the tutorial now. I've already saved this, I'm going to just hit Controller Command S to save it one more time, just in case, and now I'm going to hit Controller Command N to create a new document. Let's just call this... Furry yo, and I'm gonna make it 1920 by 1080, 72 resolution. Background contents uh, doesn't matter. We can just make it transparent. It really doesn't matter. Okay. First thing we want to do is make a text. So I'm gonna hit T, click anywhere in the middle. So let's do Eli, cause that's my name. I'm gonna double click it, make it black. It really doesn't matter what color you make it. Okay. I'm gonna click the check mark now. And I'm using a font called Whoop, but I'm not going to say that word. I don't cuss you guys. It's uh, just something I don't do. But I'll provide a link in the description to where I got this text. So anyway, it's free. <laughs> so yeah, I'm going to hit Control or Command T with this layer selected. And then just size it way up. Maybe right about there. We'll be fine. Okay. We want to make sure this is perfectly centered so then our entire effect is perfectly centered. So what we want to do is we want to hit Control or Command A. And then I'll just select the whole thing. You can see the little dancing ants with our move tool selected. You'll notice these boxes up here. If you just click the two center boxes, you'll notice that it perfectly centers it. Then you can hit Control or Command D to deselect. And you have a perfectly centered image. If you're using a font that has the letters coming together pretty close, like you see how the E is actually pretty close, this is not actually a good font to use for this effect because the fur will interfere and it'll look just like a block. So I'm not going to use the word Eli now that I look at it. I'm just going to use the word fur. Once again, <laughs> F you. <laughs> no, I'm just going to use the word fur again because I know that this is far enough apart where none of these will get affected too bad by it. And I'm actually going to size it down once again. See, this is good. Trial and error is always good to show you guys. If I was wanting to spend more time on this, I just wouldn't use this font if I really wanted to use the word Eli. But I guess I'm glad I ran into that. But now I'm going to hit Controller Command A once again. You guys can quickly get to the move tool by hitting V. And we're just going to make sure it's perfectly centered once again. Then Control Command D, and now we can get to work. So the first thing we want to do is we want to find a texture that we can use. I love Fur 2. This is probably my favorite one out of these downloads. You guys can use any of them, but I'm going to use Fur 2. Drag and drop it into here. Just size it up. I'm holding Shift and Alt just to make sure that I can size it up perfectly and not have any weird dimensions. I'm going to hit the check mark now. We just want to make it so the letters are being covered and there's a little bit of room on all the sides but I guess it really comes down to how much room or how much fur you want if you want to make it very furry then you might want to make this texture a little bigger so anyway guys make sure it's on top of the layer and one of the ways that you guys can do this just quick and maybe this is the effect you're after is if you click and hold alt and go in between the two layers and then you just click 
it'll mask it off perfectly. That might be the effect you're after, but we want it to be able to show some fur on the side. So that's not the effect you're going after. So what we want to do is we want to click and hold control, click on the big T right there, and that'll make a nice mask out of our fur font. And now we want to click on the fur two layer, and let's just call this our texture. All right, we just want to be organized here. And now next to the effects button, you'll see this clipping mask right here. We want to click that. And now it looks like we did the same exact thing, but now our layer has a layer mask right here. So what we can do is if you go to your brush tool, and let's just say that I'm going to reset these brushes just so you guys can see what I'm talking about. So let's just click here. And if we make sure that our foreground color is white and our background color is black, if we select this mask over here and we paint in, we could bring back in the texture. You guys see what I'm talking about? So if we switch these, you can also take away from the texture. You see how that's working? So white makes it appear, black makes it go away. That's racist, I'm not going to say that again. But anyway, now I'm going to go to the history right here and just go back to the add layer mask. So we're back to where we are. Using that concept, if we make a brush that looks like fur, we could literally paint in the fur and make it look awesome. So what we want to do is we want to right click, go up to this button right here, and go down to the DP brushes collection. If you hit append, that means it'll just add it to the bottom of the brushes currently in here. Or if you hit OK, that means that it will replace all the brushes with just the DP kit. So what we want to do is we want to hit append just to add it to the bottom. And we're going to find the second to last one, which is this one. And you'll notice if we paint it in, it is still doing perfectly. But that looks like a bunch of spiders. That looks really nasty. So I'm going to hit Controller Command Z to get rid of that. And we want to customize this brush. So let's go to our brush palette over here on the right. And we want to start with the brush tip shape. First, size this way down to maybe like, what, 40? Yeah, that'll look good. And we want to make the spacing about 25%, maybe a little less. 22% might be good. Now let's go to our shape dynamics. We'll make the jitter all the way up. We'll make the minimum diameter all the way down. Angle jitter, uh, we'll put it up to maybe like 60. And you could see the changes that you're making here. This will be the brush. You see how it's getting very random. And the roundness, we definitely want that all the way up. For the jitter, we want to make sure the control is set to direction. And the control for the uh, roundness jitter will be at rotation. And now for the roundness, put that all the way down to 1. Okay, so now here comes the fun part. You guys really need to pay attention right here. If we select the fur layer, right click it, go up to create work path then we hit P for the pen tool and we select the mask on the texture layer and then we go anywhere into here and we right click and go down to stroke path and making sure that the tool selection is on brush and the simulate pressure is off then we can hit OK and look what happens I mean maybe you guys can't really see it maybe if I just you know create a layer real quick and hit Alt backspace you guys can see a little better that just filled the layer with uh, white you'll notice that we got a little bit of fur going on so that's definitely not enough fur so what we want to do is we want to make sure that we select the fur once again the the fur mask over here and we hit B and then we could just hit enter a few times and that will just repeat until we get the desired effect and right about there looks nice to me and from here it's really up to you guys what you guys want to do because that's basically the tutorial but just switch to your pen tool by hitting peak then right click and go up to delete path and that will get rid of it but let's say that you guys want a little bit more diversity in the fur what we can do is repeat that entire process once again and this time just make the brush a little bigger and that will create more diversity within the fur. If you guys want to do that just follow along. I might just speed this part up because I just showed you how to do it. But anyway I'll do it real quick. So let's hit B, go to the fur layer, right click, go up to create work path. I'm going to select the fur mask right here and we're going to go up to the brush palette, go to the brush tip shape, turn the size up maybe 61 that should be just fine shape dynamics maybe change the angle all the way up just to create a little bit more diversity and now we will hit P right click stroke path brush right click go to delete path and then I'm gonna hit V to go to our move tool so we can zoom in and you know move stuff around 
you'll notice there is more diversity within our fur, which, I don't know, it makes it look a little more realistic in my opinion. So anyway, guys, uh, next we just want to make this look a million times better. So let's start with the actual layer right here and just making it look better. So I'm going to go to the effects and let's start with an inner shadow. So with the inner shadow, we just want to make the opacity 100%. Make it come from maybe a bottom, that'd be fine. Distance, set it to zero. Size, uh, right about there should be good. So about 68, and we want to change the blend mode to linear burn. Oh yeah, look at that. Oh, that looks awesome. So maybe set the size to 43 instead. I'm going to hit OK. And now what we want to do is create those shadows at the bottom. So let's make a new layer. You could do that by clicking this create new layer button down here or going control shift N. Name this layer shadows. <laughs> okay. And delete that layer. Go to our elliptical marquee tool right here. And you could do that by hitting M or just by going up to this button over here on the tools tab. And we're just going to create some ellipses and then we're going to fill them with black. So I'm going to hit control backspace. I'm going to do that for all of these. And at first, we're just creating the big shadows. So, control backspace, this entire thing, control backspace, of course. So, with that, we can hit control D, then go up to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And let's just, you know, blur this a lot. Cool. I'm going to hit OK. Next, we're going to do that same process again, but this time just focusing on the smaller shadows. Controller Command D, Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. Cool. Now we're going to drag the shadows beneath both of those layers. And look at that nice shadows isn't that pretty cool just a quick way to create custom shadows now we want to create a real background so let's delete this background that we made go up here minimize and find these backgrounds you guys can use any that you want really anything looks good like watch I'll just grab any of these drag and drop it into Photoshop size it up check mark make sure it's below the shadows look at that I mean, look how cool that looks it's insane and of course we want to create, you know, kind of a gradient map that colors the entire thing. And you guys can always customize this, but I'm just going to make a quick one. I'm going to select the top. I'm going to go to this button right here, like the half moon down here. You see that? I'm going to go to the gradient. I'm going to select it. And I'm just going to use my favorite gradient out of all of them because it just, I have no idea why, but this gradient makes it look amazing. So I'm going to hit OK. Then I'm going to set this to overlay. Or really soft light looks good too. Uh, it's really up to you. Maybe I'll stick with overlay right now though. And look at that. How cool is that? <laughs> Go find a different background if that's not what you're looking for. Any of these looks amazing, you guys. I'm just going to drag and drop this into here. Holding shift and control, perfectly size it up. Maybe bring it down a little bit. Cool. Put it down here. And just look at that. I'm just so impressed with this. I just can't even believe how awesome it looks. Maybe change the gradient to something not so harsh. Because it's making the shadows look kind of weird. But anyway, guys, with that, we are now done. I might just bring it back here. I might use this one for this tutorial because uh, I already used an infinite background for the first part. So anyway, I'm going to save this quick by hitting Control shift s Desktop. And uh, it can be called Furry, yo. I don't care. I'm including this at chichichecket.com, so make sure you go there and download it. Goodness gracious. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching. I really hope you guys learned something cool, and for those of you who have been wanting to learn this, I hope you guys can use it now and uh, use it with confidence and make anything you want out of it. Make sure you leave a like for all my hard work, and also leave a comment because I leave all my favorite comments at the end of the video, and your guys' comment from last week might have made it. So yeah, make sure you leave a comment. I mean, what do you have to lose anyway? <laughs> Thanks for all the support you guys are showing. You guys are absolutely amazing. And also, I can't believe it, but the last tutorial got like 400 likes in the first day or two, which was crazy. Why can't you guys do that every time? It made me feel so loved. <laughs> anyway, I will see you guys in the next tutorial. Peace. Well, let me tell you about some chicks that I know. I got a lap team.
seen a girl that said she wanted pronto I got a girl in Toronto, man, I call her Raptor She tryna chase the dollar, yeah, that's all she after She said she fed up with the modern rappers There's no energy, that sounded thin to me, yeah So I said I got that remedy, I got that old shit You can depend on me, <laughs> cause I'm versatile Shake up the floor, I reverse the tile You can bet your whole purse, every verse is wild Make a sucker MC go reverse his style You can put your money down on it Yeah, you can count on it And if you're feeling like it sounds legit Then you should bounce to this I think you know what time it is Yeah, yeah Star after, yeah, they thought that they 